Hi, I'm Adam Lane Smith, an attachment specialist. And today I'm going to teach you how to stop having bad reactions. This is one of the biggest questions I got when I worked as a licensed therapist. How can I stop myself from reacting angrily or loudly or sad or scared and jumping in off and, and just flying off the handle when, th when things happen? How can I stop my bad reactions? And my answer to that was you can't. <laughs> Sorry, there's no, no, um, you absolutely can, but you don't stop them in the moment. That is the problem that most people have. They, they imagine stopping and fixing their problems right there on the spot. I'm just going to have the emotion and just not have the reaction at all. I'm just going to stop it. It doesn't work that way. Here's why. The reason we have bad reactions typically is because we have two different hemispheres of our brain. I'm going to point at my own brain. The camera might be flipped. This is my right side of the brain. The right side of the brain is emotional. It controls our emotions. It controls everything over there. Artistic creativity is on that side. The left side is logic, pure logic, math, science, um, literature, language actually is over here. Um, two different sides of the brain. When you have, let's say you have damaged attachment, you operate at a higher level anxiety because your brain says nobody is ever going to help me. I have to worry all the time to keep everything perfect. That drains the energy off your left logical side of your brain and increases the energy on the right emotional side of the brain to create this circling effect so that you are always emotional. What that ha what that looks like is when you ask somebody like that, hey, where's your anxiety level? They say, oh, I'm just normal. Normal to them typically is seven out of 10. It's 70% anxiety, sometimes 80% anxiety every day, walking around, waking up, talking, eating, brushing their teeth, 70 to 80% anxiety full all day long. What that gives you is 20 to 30% buffer zone to react to anything without going into full meltdown. That's not much. That's really not much at all, especially because you are already operating at such a high level that even one more point, even 10 more percent will diminish your logical capacity even more. When you hit eight, nine, you aren't logical and you're just normal until you hit 10, you become increasingly irrational and the left side of the brain diminishes as the right side of the brain freaks out and says, how do I maximize my pleasure and minimize my pain for the next five seconds? And if you're stuck in that all day, every day, and your stress level is high, everything is going to set you off. <laughs> One person is going to call you and say, hey, can you pass me that sandwich over there? And you're going to say, oh, fine, I can do And you're going to be mad and throw the sandwich at them. Your kid is going to come in and ask for your attention while you're in the middle of a project, and you're going to yell at them for wanting to spend time with you. Your spouse is going to ask to sit together that evening, and you're going to say, I don't have time, I'm doing And you're going to start blowing up at people for nothing. And they're going to be hurt because they won't understand why. They don't understand what they did wrong because they did nothing wrong. You can't live that way. <laughs> and so many people do. If you are already at that point and something sets you off, how, how can you possibly stop the freight train when it's already rolling? When you are already having an emotional spike that high and you go from 70% to 90% in three seconds or less, how can you possibly stop that? You can't stop a bullet with your fingertips and you can't stop those emotional spikes at that point. I hope you're following me because the answer is not to stop those emotional spikes and those bad reactions in the moment. They are to you stop those by relaxing in advance. So there's a number of ways to do this. The biggest one, the most immediate one is to activate the hind brain back here through intense, prolonged physical discomfort. I don't use the word pain, but sometimes pain can be useful. Intense, prolonged physical discomfort, because what happens is our brains are built for 10,000 years ago, more 12,000 years ago, prior to the rise of agriculture, when we were a hunter gatherer nomadic tribe, you'd have to fight tigers and bears and lions. Oh my. And it was rough. Life was rough. You didn't have time for emotional spikes and you didn't have time to be stressed all the time. You had to focus about on surviving. So when you experience prolonged, intense physical discomfort, your brain says, wait a minute, something is going on with my body. I need to focus on this so that I make sure I don't get hurt. I'm going to drain the emotional brain, the right side, my right side of my brain. I'm going to drain that back to zero. 
and then restore that energy to the logical left side for spatial reasoning, for logic, for all the things I'm going to have to do to run and jump and stab with a spear to survive. Prolong, intense prolonged physical discomfort. This, the most damaging version of this, uh, this is why young teens especially use self-mutilation. This is why they cut or burn. This is why they are activating that process without understanding why. And they feel intense emotional relief because they're relaxing. They're relaxing. And it feels great because the emotional storm goes away and they feel calm and logical. And they get a rush of dopamine because they feel so relaxed. So cutting feels good. It is one of the worst ways to do this <laughs> and also not the most effective. Um, progressive muscle relaxation is an incredible tool for this, where you lay there for 15 minutes, tightening and relaxing different muscle groups on your body to the point where they're shaking and letting them go. Yoga, martial arts, Tai Chi. Tai Chi is built for elderly people to be able to do who have bad joints, but it's intense, prolonged physical discomfort. Runners, runners get this from runners high. Exercising, lifting weights. This is why going to the gym is therapy. Going to the gym is medicine. You are actively reducing your stress level from 7 out of 10 down to 2 out of 10. And then you go on with your day, and it takes a while for that latent stress to increase. So if you do it every 6 hours, every 12 hours, every 24 hours, if you every single day work out for 12 hours, or 24, every 24 hours work out for half an hour, every 24 hours you take a walk. Every 24 hours you do yoga. Every 24 hours you do martial arts. Every 24 hours you do your deadlifts. You do your progressive muscle relaxation. If you do that, you are banking that and lowering your overall latent anxiety so that you go into your day with 2 out of 10 anxiety. Sometimes 0 out of 10 anxiety. You can get down to 0 out of 10. That is how you stop your bad reactions. Because then you have an enormous buffer. You're only at 20% anxiety. You have 80% before max, before meltdown. You have 80% to go. That is how you have good reactions because then you go into them and when someone does something, you go, Ugh, I don't like that. And then your logical brain is still connected and says, but wait a minute, I shouldn't yell at my kid for trying to spend time to me, with me. I shouldn't yell at my wife for asking to spend, sit and hold my hand. That's how you go back to zero. That's how you relax. That's how you beat your bad reactions in advance with careful planning. You beat them with prolonged physical intense discomfort. Again, not pain. And again, not cutting. <laughs> Those are very ineffective. But that, building it into every single day in advance. If you can do it in the morning, fantastic. If you do it at night, it will help you sleep better. A lot of anxiety uh, leads to a lot of insomnia because your mind just won't turn off. Because you're at 7 or 8 out of 10 anxiety and your brain is trying to figure out how to fix it. If you do that intense physical exercise at night before bed, maybe not five minutes before bed, but an hour before bed, your sleeping will be so much better. And then you will wake up with better sleep, and that also will help your better reactions. Because then, well, when you sleep better, your brain works better. It actually functions better. They've shown that studies show that sleep, not getting sleep, and being sleep deprived is equivalent of being buzzed on alcohol all the time. If you are always buzzed on alcohol and always at 7 out of 10 anxiety, that's a recipe for destroying your relationships over nothing. It's a recipe for overthinking everything. That's a recipe for freaking out every time something little happens in your life and people get tired of it. And you ruin your own life. Prolonged, intense physical discomfort fixes that. So, start exercising. Just 20 minutes a day. Start lifting weights. Buy a set of dumbbells and start lifting them. Do yoga. Do Tai Chi. It's the e one of the easiest martial arts in the world on your joints and, and body. It's meant for people who aren't physically active or have damaged bodies. Tai Chi is incredibly helpful. Progressive muscle relaxation. Buy exercise bands for uh, on Amazon for something like $9. You can buy a pack of resistance bands. They are big, giant rubber bands that you can put on your arms and just stretch like this while you're watching Netflix. And just, uh, you hold it and just uh, hold like this while you're with one eye open while you're watching Netflix. And that, that will actively lower your anxiety without interrupting your life because you're already doing other things that you are doing. You're just adding that to it. You can do it at work. You can put the resistance bands on your ankles and stretch your feet apart. You can put them around your knees and stretch your thighs apart. It'll work your thighs. It'll strengthen your joints and reduce your anxiety overall. 20 minutes a day can change your life. 
20 minutes a day to change all of your reactions. If you have bad reactions once a week, could you spend 20 minutes a day doing other things and also add this in? Could you buy resistance bands on Amazon for nine bucks or at your local Walmart, anywhere with a fitness area, buy some resistance bands? That would be a great way to do it. That is how you fix your bad reactions in advance. That's how you stop those bad reactions and stop ruining your life.